was a three-hour tour on the minnow <laughs> that turns into a pretty frightening idea for a picture. When I read the script, sitting in the office, I went in and I talked to Ken Wiederhorn and Reuben Train, at which time I asked them very politely, you know, what psychotic mind stayed up however many nights to come up with this, this idea? And Ken Wiederhorn, of course, said I did. And I was embarrassed, and I figured, well, I guess I won't be working as an actor in this picture. I was wrong, and it's funny sometimes how you're wrong, because that film is sort of a cult classic. I know it plays in the Grove Cinema and different places at different times, and it's on the television uh, once in a while. But we had more fun making that picture than a lot of big productions that I had worked on since then. Low pressure. Uh, good actors, uh, plenty of time, you know, for, for set fun, as well as doing the work. What a wonderful guy. There were moments working with John Carradine where he would make a joke about what he was going to do, and uh, like when he throws the radio overboard. He does it with such finesse and such controlled anger that it's very hard not to laugh. And you know, you see, and he'll do it over and over again, and he will not vary uh, on anything except that the timing would only have gotten better on the way he did it. So if you did the scene three times, all three takes would be usable. But one of them might not be good because one of the other actors might find something funny and lose the take for that. But uh, he would tell us great stories about Hollywood in the 30s, uh, which means hold the role. We're gonna, we're gonna finish this story first. Or he would recite some Shakespeare, at which time, of, hey, when you have an actor's actor like this person who decides to recite a little Shakespeare, let's give this some time. They should have rolled the camera then. In fact, a lot of times when we're shooting a picture, uh, we're shooting the wrong picture. We should shoot some of what's going on with this crew and shoot, you know, roll the camera with what's going on with the, with the artists. Because there's some very funny and very amusing stuff there, too. And film, of course, being the cheapest thing we, we have, I don't know why we don't. I mean, these men have great class. We're running out of actors that lived through that period of time who can do that. A lot of actors today wouldn't, would never consider doing a part in a low-budget picture, not even a cameo because, uh, well, probably because they're not getting enough millions to do that part. Maybe not even as a favor to someone that they made films with before they became famous. I'm not famous, so I don't know. For me, working as an actor is probably very much the same for him or any of the other actors. It's a very controlled situation. What was better for me working with, like, Peter Cushing is that he'll say, uh, wait a minute, if we, do, if we do this and Luke moves over to here, we're going to lose something on, on our next move because it takes away from something he's going to do or it takes away from something I'm going to do. And when you block a scene with someone like that, it's always much, much easier because you both really zero in on what each other is going to do. And it, it gets it's great to do that. You know, you've got really good control then. Of course, uh, you never know when someone is going to throw a curve just to see what your response is going to be to it while the camera's rolling. And then that takes the other side of being a professional actor then comes in because then you're going to do the same thing. And it can, it can work either way. It can be something good or it can be something that when we cut the camera say, well, it, it didn't work that well or it might get a laugh when that's not what we want. So, you know, but he's brilliant. I mean, the work the man's done, look at his work. I think it was right after that. Went on to a really great one there, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have gone to Los Angeles with him. <laughs> oh, did you get it? No, I should have. I should have gone out to Los Angeles. I wonder if he used that piece of film for there. No, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> So you might have you might have gotten the Luke Skywalker part had you played your cards. Well, right? I could I could certainly have played his his evil twin or his older brother. 
Well, Brooke's a great actress. I think she's coming down to Florida uh, to do a play this year sometime, which I'd like to see. But, um, I'll tell you again, the cast in that picture was great. I mean, Brooke was great to work with. She always alert, always knows her lines, knows what to do. I enjoyed it tremendously. The Proteus, I, I really don't know if it's a mythical ship or if the or if there really was a Nazi ship called the Proteus, I don't know. But the ship that you see in the background ship was a uh, cement uh, ship that was aground in Bimini. There was some other stuff done on a ship on the Miami River that I don't, I don't think we used very much of that when we went aboard the ship to take a look around it, which they should have now that I think of it, because some of that was really very scenic. But the, the, actual, the actual ship we see in the long shots is actually on land. It's just shot in a way that makes it look like it's... No, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a wreck in, uh, off the north end of Bimini. And it's there. It's still there. There were two places where we filmed that. One was in an old hotel in Palm Beach. And the other one was at the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables before it was uh, reconstructed and, and reopened. It's closed now, so maybe we'll wait till it is right and then shoot uh, Shockwave Part 2. The zombies were really great. I, th I have a feeling that what Ken did was Ken kept the zombies away from the cast so that when we encountered the zombies, we were a little more frightened of them. Because we, we, we never really knew absolutely everything that the zombie was going to do in, in the scene. Um, there was a couple of zombies. Well, there's, we've got a whole planet full of zombies. But the zo there were some zombies that were pretty scary anyway. And I think they intended to try and scare us to, uh, you know, for the full effect, which was fun to do because when you're, well, working as an actor, sometimes it's like playing as a child. Uh, so it's fun to get scared sometimes. Of course, we also found it very amusing when Brooke Adams and I were hiding in, a, in an oven uh, the boiler down in the basement of the hotel. We were hiding from the Nazis in an oven. Yeah, nice touch. 